Rub up your engines! We got a brand new Nissan Rogue. His wife's nuts about it. You know, I'm not nuts about Nissans, but I'm gonna honestly analyze this car to show you the new technology that it has, how it runs, and you can decide whether you wanna buy one or not. It's a nice size SUV, and in this case, it's the top of the line. It's the platinum all-wheel drive, and it's the VC Turbo. Now, what does VC Turbo mean? Well, I'm gonna show you. It means it says VC Turbo on the top. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, it is a three-cylinder engine. VC stands for variable compression, and turbo means it has a turbocharger. Variable compression works like this. A normal engine has a piston on a piston rod. It goes up and down the same all the time. This, the piston rods are articulated, and through hydraulics and electronics, they can change how high the pistons go. You can have like an 8 to 1 compression, up to 14.1 compression. The more compression you get, obviously, you're getting a little more oomph and power pushing it down with that extra pressure. The computer decides when it's going to use one versus the other. It's a very complex system. They've been working on these things for ages. They've had them out a little while with a four-cylinder. This is the first one with a three-cylinder engine. When you combine the variable compression with a turbocharger, you can get good gas mileage and an awful lot of power out of a tiny little engine. So this thing puts out 201 horsepower and 225 pound-feet of torque. That means it accelerates quite well. Now it does have a CVT transmission, and you know what I say about Jacko transmissions, but this is actually a completely redesigned one. It has like 30% less friction in it. They get good gas mods for an SUV. He gets 35 miles a gallon driving this thing around. That does show you that things haven't changed that much because our 2007 Matrix gets 37. Now, it's smaller than this, this weighs more, and this is all-wheel drive. If you're really into gas mods more, get the two-wheel drive. Most people really don't need them. My mother lived in Buffalo. <laughs> she had a Toyota Corolla front-wheel drive. Didn't even put snow tires on the thing, and it still worked. So, if you don't need it, you want to get a little bit better gas mods with less complexity, don't get the all-wheel drive. But if you want it, they've been making it for quite some time. Now, the only qualm I have against these are that is very, very, very high technology. Of course, everything eventually breaks. When this breaks, I doubt if anyone will know how to fix them. But this guy got a pretty good deal. He bought it in Poughkeepsie, New York. He didn't have to pay anything extra. And that dealer offers a lifetime, unlimited mileage powertrain warranty. If this crazy variable compression engine with all these fulcrums inside it, flying all over the place, computers operating them, CVT, Jacko transmission, if it ever breaks, they gotta fix it for free. Now, <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if it does break down on him because he normally gets rid of his cars, keeps them maybe five, six years. The longest he had a car was the last one before this for his wife, where he had a Nissan Murano, and he got 130,000 miles on it. The only thing that broke was the microphone inside the dash for talking. He had good luck with that Murano. A lot of people don't, but he did. This has this lifetime powertrain warranty on it at this dealer. I don't know how many dealers give something like that, but that would certainly give you peace of mind. And like I said, he didn't have to pay for it. If you remember, the guy came with that Jeep pickup truck last year, and it had a diesel engine. And I said, you know, those are Italian diesel engines. He says, yeah, I know. Series 1 had problems, Series 2 had problems, but this is Series 3. And I said, well, two out of three, I don't know. <laughs> Let's hope yours isn't bad. Now, he had to pay a thousand bucks, but he paid for a hundred thousand mile engine warranty on it. With that Italian diesel engine, that was probably a really smart move, because generation one and two, I've seen tons of guys have to have the engines replaced enough. And sometimes the replacement engines weren't very good either, because they were just broken Italian diesels that they'd fixed and put them in, and some of them, the day they got them back, oil's leaking out, because they didn't even seal the gaskets right. So, you don't want to get involved in that, but at least with this, he's not going to have to worry. He says, his wife likes it so much, she might keep it more than their usual five years. Hey, there's no worries there, as long as the dealership stays in business. And in this case, they've been in business for 50, 60 years, he said, so I doubt that they're going out of business anytime soon. There's a lot of money involved in making these cars. Look at Kia and Hyundai, the Korean car manufacturers they're not very fond of, right? They just admitted this year, they got to spend $2 billion replacing engines in their cars. That's a lot of money, right? So. If this thing does go bad, hey, he's got a warranty on it. He doesn't have to worry about it. This is the Platinum, which is top of the line. As we look inside, and if you look at the VIN number, you know what J stands for? If you don't know, you should. It means it was made in Japan. <laughs> and let's face it, the Japanese build 
the best vehicles that they sell in Japan. By screaming Yamaha, it was made in Japan. It still rubs like a monster. Even take this old Mercedes, it's 31 years old. It's made in Deutschland and it's still running great. As for the ones made in Alabama, well, let's just say who lost the Civil War. Now, being a Platinum Edition, it's got everything. Beautiful wheels, bigger tires. We go inside. Now, it's beautifully appointed. It looks like you're inside a gazelle or something, no? <laughs> and there's all this room. It's got the dual sunroofs, you know, everything everybody wants. It's got a great screen, too. We'll turn it on so we can see it. Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Look, it's telling you it gives all your information to Nissan for various purposes. <laughs> but it was so fast I couldn't read the whole thing. You know, like one of those contracts, which in the end says, yes, we have the right to your firstborn child, and we get options on the second one. <laughs> oh, the usual. And it's a nice screen. It's a good size. It doesn't go up too high and block any vision. And the coloration really goes in with the rest of the dash. And it's got a really cool tachometer, speedometer. Look at that. Ooh, space age. We got space age stuff going here. And a nice small steering wheel. And they're all doing this. They're putting a little flat point on the bottom. Kind of make it like a race car. Look, you can change the screen. You can do all kinds of stuff on it. Showing you how the variable compression's working, how the turbo's working. I mean, it's uh, quite an interesting car. Now, he's only got 6,900 miles on it. He hasn't had any problems with it yet. Like I say, the one worry that I have about this would be the variable compression. It's a three-cylinder, first time they made it. Very complex. And the new CVT, which, of course, is a Jetco CVT transmission. But it's redesigned. Only like I said, hey, the guy's not taking any chances. Where he bought it in Poughkeepsie, they said you got a lifetime powertrain warranty. So he really didn't have to worry about it. I mean, the most he ever kept on Nissan was 130,000 miles, and that was the Murano his wife had before this. So he's not complaining about it. He gets bored with cars, he said. He wants a different one because he's bored. Me, I'm bored with spending money. So I'll drive a 30-year-old car. I just don't care. <laughs> Now, this is the loaded plant in the verge. Out the door, he paid $42,000 for the car. Now, if you saw, I made a video on the Nissan Kicks the other day. That was a $19,000 car. So, you get two of those for one of these. Much faster, much roomier, a lot better looking inside than an Econo box was. They both get you down the road, but you really can't compare these in terms of how they drive, how they look, and basically how you feel inside. You don't feel like you're in an Econo box. Look at all the room, and it's got all the features you possibly want. The steering wheel's heated. Yeah. The front seats are heated. Hey, the back seats are heated too. So your passengers in the back don't get ripped off. Get in the back seats. Let's climb in there. Now he's a big guy and he's got the seat back really far. But it's still not even touching my knees. I got long legs. They're very comfortable. This is a real nice armrest they got in the middle. These seats. They're leather, but they're really padded well. They're very comfortable. And, of course, it's got the air conditioning heat. You can heat the seats electronically. You can adjust it yourself back here. You've got various plugs for phones or USB, whatever you want to plug in. And they got nice little pockets you can store stuff. You know it's going to end up in there. Nothing. Dirty honkers. <laughs> it's going to be full of dirty honkers. Luxury car, got the self openers and closers, and you can see you got a lot of nice space. And I love these so people don't know what you have in your trunk, so they don't break your windows to steal somebody's purse or something. You got to have one of these. And of course, when you put the seats down, you can carry a lot of stuff in this. It's it's long. You can even carry long boards if you want to stick it all the way to the front windshields. I've done that before. And you're not going to believe this. We go under here. It's got a spare tire, but look. It's a full-size spare tire. It's not one of those little tiny donut jobs. It's an actual tire. You can lock it. You can open it from here. I mean, these things are well thought out. It opens itself, but if you have your key in your hand, you can do that old one that Ford started. You can kick under here. There it goes. It didn't like my kick. I had to go left-footed here. Look, there's my hometown. Niagara Falls. There it is. Kind of a crappy rendition of it, if you ask me, the water looks better than that. <laughs> so let's take it for a spin, see how it goes. Now, I guess they think people are stupid. Push, brake, and start, switch. Well, we all know that. I mean, we're not that dumb. Starts right up. Well, the window up's got nice automatic windows. And, of course, it's got 
lane departure there's a little arrow that's in there for lane departure it goes out and start flashing at you see it's got the cool backup camera where not only does it have a wide angle but it shows you from the top too so you don't have to worry about running into the mercedes that's next to you <laughs> <laughs> this driveway's a stinker to get out of the way it's curved so hey i gotta say i should get this for my wife's car she backs the car up turns it around goes forward uh, my wife does too <laughs> ball is in the air i mean look at this it shows you everything with a really good picture, not just some stinking little one. It's it's really well done, I gotta say. Now it's basically a mid-sized SUV, so it's reasonably high up in the air. I can go over this bump without having to come to a complete stop. And we're not gonna step in the gas till we get out of my neighborhood. <laughs> so I don't get yelled at. Now it's got a great bow sound system, which you're not gonna turn on because then it'll play music and somebody will claim money out of my YouTube videos because I use their music, so. <laughs> we won't turn it on, but it does sound fantastic. Like the heads up speedometer, you know, so you can see where you, how fast you're going. 12, 10. It really is handy, so you don't have to take your eye off the road. You can see it, but your passenger can't. So your wife doesn't know how fast you're going. <laughs> so here we go. Let's see what this three cylinder. Whoa, this three cylinder engine has some balls to it. I gotta say. I am shocked. It's the combo of the turbo and the variable compression engine. Very complex stuff, but you step on the gas, it starts to go. There's no turbo lag in this baby. Now it does have a Nissan cruise control system that it can steer for itself too. I mean, it's not self-driving, but really none of them are actually completely self-driving. I have to say, this is a pretty high-tech savvy car. Nissan calls it Pro Pilot Assist. Hey, it works pretty good for what it is you know and of course it's got the modern everything so as you can see we're speeding the speed limit's 25 and we're doing 26 now uh oh the police are gonna come get us now we'll step on the gas and feel the transmission and see it acts like it's shifting it doesn't have gears but they figured out how to program these things so it feels like a normal car See how it goes up and down just like a normal car does. And if these things hold up, only time will tell because it's a new design. It's a great technological feature and it makes it feel normal. We just have to see what happens. Hopefully you'll have it five years from now and it won't break at all. But then again, he doesn't really care because he'd get a new transmission free anyway. <laughs> hey, I gotta say that the technology, it's working now and it's fun to drive. Nissan always made fun to drive cars. Of course, the driving position, you're nice and high. You get a good view. The windows are all set up quite well. The side view mirrors are huge. You really get a good view of all of them. You're not going to be surprised by anything. And what the owner finds great is when his wife's driving a car, if you get too close to somebody front or back, the car actually stops itself. So you don't whack any pedestrians. Now, that's something that's definitely worthwhile. So here's a non diehard Nissan fan saying, seems to be a pretty good car. I would really question. How long is this three-cylinder VC turbo gonna last? The newly designed CVT transmission, how much is that gonna last? But the owner doesn't care because he's got a lifetime unlimited mileage warranty on an engine and a transmission. Now, from the dealership's perspective, I can understand it because a lot of people that listen to me or listen to anybody who understands mechanics is gonna say, this is a phenomenal technological advancement to make the pistons go up and down different lengths. Let's face it, costs a lot of money to build these things and nobody knows how long they're really gonna last. That's the thing. They're the only people that are really doing it. You don't see Toyota doing it, you don't see Honda doing it. And the main reason they're not doing it is because the promised better gas mod didn't really come out. They thought they were gonna get 20, 30% better gas mods with that system. And they are getting like maybe 4%. It, it didn't make all that much difference. It's kind of like, if you remember back in the day, when the Wankel engine was in the Mazdas and they had the Mazda Cosmo. Some of those things got like seven miles a gallon. The Wankel rotary engine, small, puts out a ton of power but they're extremely inefficient, so they never made it. Well, this is extremely complex, and it does get good gas mileage, but that giant level of technology costs so much money to build, and we don't still know how long it's gonna last, that nobody else has picked up on this yet. They're not really sold on it. We'll see what happens with this. Maybe this will be a wave of the future, or maybe it'll be like the Wankel engine, and it'll be in a few cars here or there, but it'll be an oddball thing that, well, that was interesting, we tried that, now maybe we'll try something else. Who knows? But he doesn't have to worry, so he doesn't care. When he gets his oil changed there, they give him a free rental car. Well, he gets his oil changed, his car's worked on, right? So, 
if it did break you now, as long as you got transportation, you're not worried about it. It is fascinating technology. I'll give them that. It's very complex. I don't think anybody would be able to fix it if it finally breaks down. If you like technology, you're a Star Wars fan, hey, you'll probably be enamored with this thing. Time will tell how they hold up. They sure are fun to drive now, I'll say that much. And we'll see what happens five years from now if I'm still kicking. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.